guys and welcome back to another video inside my channel welcome to another baking show video today we're going to be doing something really fun because you know why mother's day in england right now it is sunday the 18th which is mother's sunday the 19th of march which is mother's day for us this year so if you um if it's mother's day make sure to wish your mother a happy mother's day and shower them with gifts which i'm going to be doing because i will be making a red velvet cake for my mother because it's mother's day and i decided to choose this cake because number one she requested it and number two because i haven't made it before so we're going to make everything from scratch which includes the cake and the cream cheese frosting but i will start with the cake first obviously so let's just get straight into it let me tell you the ingredients you're going to need for the cake part so for the cake you're going to need 310 grams of all-purpose flour or just plain flour two tablespoons of cocoa powder one teaspoon of baking soda one teaspoon of salt 300 grams of sugar 240 milliliters of buttermilk which has to be room temperature so I left it out to curdle here. One cup of or 200 grams of vegetable oil. One teaspoon of vinegar, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Two eggs. 150 grams of room temperature butter. One to two tablespoons of red food coloring. This, I know for a fact, is the worst food coloring in the world and it will do nothing. So um, I will try my best to see how much this will do. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract, which we have hit. So that's what you need for the cake. It is a lot of ingredients and I've never actually made a cake on this channel before. I have made a cake actually before that I did film, but it was like really bad quality. So like I'm not gonna upload it. But I will be remaking that cake in June, which is like, because it's June, I'll make that cake, if you can guess what that means. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is weigh out um, your 310 grams of all-purpose flour or plain flour, which is what I use in my English household. 310 grams. Okay, perfect. 310 grams of all-purpose flour. This is what it looks like, and then we need 16 grams of cocoa powder. Oh, that smells like hot chocolate before it's cooked. Okay, we're adding our one teaspoon of baking soda. I thought baking soda was not the one used for cakes. I thought you used baking powder because it has a picture of a cake on it. Um, I guess it's not. And then one teaspoon of salt. Salt never goes well, as you know in my videos. I can never do it well, so we'll just see. I always add way too much. Okay, I'm gonna say that's enough. I don't wanna overfill, but yes. One tablespoon of salt, and then we have to sift it into, uh, into a bowl, which I actually forgot to do originally, but let's use this bowl for our dry ingredients. I'm just gonna tip it into this bowl. Once that is sieved into a bowl, all you want to do now is just mix it together with a whisk. So you want your dry ingredients to be nice and incorporated for when you add them to the wet ingredients. Normally I have my camera angles like going into straight in the bowl, but I thought I'd do something different where it looks at me and just kind of a bit of the bowl because I thought like this is more of an interactive video than this is how you bake. So I thought I'd just like, you know, celebrate with you as well. So do you like my job? So I'm getting sidetracked. I'm going to be late to therapy if I just don't like do this quickly. But yeah, once I've fully incorporated, they should look something like this, which is just kind of like brown. Look at the cocoa powder. Okay, now we just set that aside and we're going to get straight onto our butter. So 115 grams of room temperature butter. I've already measured it out and, you know, already got it. So I'm going to get that. Where's my little fun little pink spatula thing? Thank you. And then you need 300 grams of sugar, which. I'm just going to put straight into it. Okay, so once you have your sugar, we're going to use an electric whisk, which we'll go over here for. So let's just use the electric whisk until it's nicely incorporated. Beat until smooth. It should look something 
something like this. It does look more like lumpy, but that's just because we added way more sugar to butter ratio. But that will all be fixed for the next step, which you add in your two eggs. And yeah, so I'm gonna use this bowl. As you know, I always crack my eggs in the bowl first because I always get shut in it. That was such a clean cut. That was so good. I'm so proud of myself. Shut up. Yes. Okay, I got a bit on my hands. So you just add in one egg at a time until fully incorporate. Is that shell? No, that's not shell. Okay. One egg, mix together. Second egg, mix together. like once two of the eggs are in. Now you're gonna add 200 grams of vegetable oil. So the measurements are one cup and one tablespoon or 200 grams. I'm gonna use the grams because I know that cups are a little bit different when it comes to like liquids and I think this is classified as a liquid. That is a lot of vegetable oil though. Again you're just gonna add that into your mixture and beat until well combined. It said use one teaspoon of vinegar. I'm not doing that because I don't have the right vinegar anyways, but we'll just anyways. And then you do one cup or 240 mils of buttermilk. I hope this is enough. Their buttermilk looks way more runny than mine does. Mine is very thick, so we'll just hope for the best. Let's hope I haven't screwed it up, guys. This kind of smells like yogurt, which I'm confused because like it doesn't smell like milk. It smells like yogurt. Is that what buttermilk is supposed to be? Basically just yogurt? Now we just beat that until combined. There you go, that's nice and combined if you ask me. Now we're just gonna gradually add the dry mixture, which is this, so it's like, you just do one, one bit each, and it should kind of look like a light chocolate, like consistency because of the cocoa powder. Okay, before I add the second part of the dry mixture, make sure to preheat the oven to 175 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit. Let's mix it together. I've kind of been lied to you guys. I thought red I thought red velvet cake was like you add ingredients and it somehow makes it red, but it's just red food dye. Anyways, I hope this is just gonna taste like a chocolate cake because it does just smell like a chocolate cake right now. Anyways, next we add in two teaspoons of vanilla extract. This is like quite thick. I don't know why mine is really thick, but yeah. And then we just mix it again. Time to add in the red food dye. Now this could go completely wrong. Like, this could go very wrong because this is old food dye. Also, it really does not appear very red at all. It's very like pink. Um, this is already very brown, so hopefully that just like gives it a boost, but we're just gonna add, look, there's literally hardly anything in here. I think we're gonna start with that much. Let's just see that. Let's just hope it works, guys. Let's hope for the best. You can see how much we added in and it's only that amount of red. It's very pink, so I'm gonna add... You know what guys, that is as red as we're gonna get it. It's actually looking much redder than it was before, which I'm very happy about. But let's go get our bacon tins. Okay, we have successfully greased our tins. What I did is I put, um, I cut out some parchment paper in the shape of a circle. So I put it at the bottom of that to help it like move. And um, because it always sticks to the bottom, it doesn't stick to the sides. And then I just greased it with some butter on each side of the tins. Now we're just gonna distribute it evenly into these two tins. Let's hope for the best, guys. Is as good as we're gonna get. That's pretty even if you ask me. Now, now let's put these in the oven. Please. 
and you're going to bake that for 35 to 40 minutes. I don't know why I went all Queen Victoria on you, but hey ho. So I'm going to make it for 35, check it at 35 using the toothpick method, make sure it comes out clean, if not 40 minutes. 35 on the clock. I am going to now tidy up the mess I have made in Zion Kitchen. I don't know why I'm so messy when it comes to baking, but I am. So I'm going to tie this up and get back to you once the cakes are done. Okay guys, welcome back to segment part two. So first, I'm going to tell you the ingredients that you're going to need to make this cream cheese icing. So for the cream cheese icing, all you're going to need is 300 ml of heavy whipping cream, 2 cups or 450 grams of cream cheese at room temperature, 190 grams of powdered sugar and 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, I do not have enough Philadelphia cream cheese. I only have half that we're supposed to need. So I'm going to half everything, make half the batch, um, and if I need more, I actually have this cream cheese style frosting which I found in my cupboard, so we'll just hope for the best. So we're going to add the powdered sugar, the Philadelphia cream cheese, and the sugar, all in a nice bowl. I'm going to use this bowl, so let's just get straight to it. Uh, it needs to be room temperature, so this has been sitting out for a bit. Oh my gosh, she's stuck. Okay. Then you need 190 grams of powdered sugar. This one's more full. But since we are halving it, I'm going to add about 100 ish, like 95 ish. And then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. But since we're making half, I will just. We actually have a teaspoon of vanilla, so you know what? I'll just add in. So we're going to beat this into smooth and extremely creamy. <laughs> okay, that does look very creamy if you ask me. I kind of want to taste it. Ew, that's kind of gross. It kind of tastes like really bad yogurt. Now we just add 300 ml of heavy whipping cream and then whip until it makes soft peaks. Hope for the best. How much is this? If that's 300, we need 150. Oh, this is 300. Let's just add half of the tub and see how we go. This is double whipping. Ooh, this looks actually really thick. Oh my God, look how thick this is. Oh, shite, it's very thick. Now we just have to whip this until it makes a soft peak. <laughs> Okay, that is what it's supposed to look like. Nice and whipped. Now we're just gonna have to fold it into our other mixture. So let's just do that, shall we? So let's just grab a bit and just like fold it in nicely. This is looking quite nice. Looking very scrumdily yum yum purr. Okay, this is what it looks like. I think that is good. Like, I think this is what it is supposed to look like in the end. So we'll just take a little gander gander. So let's actually like, take a taste because now it's like, I mean, it tastes sweet. It does taste like cream cheese. It actually tastes like cheesecake. Is that what cream cheese is? Cream cheese is cheesecake. We have our little frosting like action going on. Um, if I need to make more, I will make more. But now let's actually go and frost the cake. This is what they look like. As you can see, they rose quite a lot, which is very nice. Oh, that's gorgeous. So we're supposed to level out the cakes, but they are quite level, but we are going to have to do it anyways because we actually need to use them. So I'm gonna, don't have a cake leveler, but I do have a knife. So I guess we'll just hope for the best and just hope we don't kill ourselves.
Okay, well, I'm going to put this in the fridge and then I'll see you back in three hours to finish it off. Woohoo. Okay, guys, I'm back from my excursion. I just got back and I'm going to finish my cake now. So I don't actually, I kind of want this to look a lot better. So I am going to use this butter. Oh no, it's actually, it's still cream cheese style icing. It's a little bit more yellow, but I am going to try and use this as well, just because I want to make it look way nicer than it does right now. It just looks, I mean, it looks, okay. It looks more white here because it looks very like crummy. I'm not sure how I really like feel about how crummy it looks, but yeah, we're gonna try and make it look much nicer. And then I got the little cookie cutters so we can cut the hearts out. This is gonna look way better once it's done. Okay, I think it looks really nice now. So let's just set this to the side for a second. Let's get our little heart things out. I think we'll just make, just thinking about this logically. Okay, we'll make this size heart. So we're going to basically use these and cut out little hearts from the tops of the cake that we've already used. We'll cut out eight, so that's, that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Put one here. We're just kind of making like a clock in a way. Oh my God, doesn't that look so cute? It does look very chocolatey. Now we're just gonna crush up the remaining cake that we have. Just literally crush it up into little little chunks, like little crummy crumb crumbs. Just gonna crush it, crush it. Okay, so now we're just gonna like, on the sides, just see how this goes. I think it needs to be more crushed up. Okay guys, I have just finished making the cake. It's not perfect, but I think it's cute. So let's see what lo it looks like. <laughs> with that everybody i want to thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you do like it please consider subscribing it'll be very nice and very appreciated thank you very much and if you like the video please make sure you like the video i have some very fun videos planned in the coming few weeks i actually have a vlog that will be coming out soon hopefully um the day after this video is coming out i have a new vlog that i filmed like yesterday or a few days ago but yeah so thank you guys so much for watching i love you all and i'll see you in the next video bye <laughs>